Hi guys, welcome back to my channel Confessions of a Gaming Mum. So this is really a bit of a, a kind of an unplanned video. Not that there is a lot of planning that goes into my videos. But yeah, it's kind of unplanned because I've hit a bit of a stalemate with my videos that I wanted to record. I was hoping to have got this done or get a video done before this one. But again, I've just been so well, extremely busy and also just uninspired by what I could actually do for videos. So yeah, I thought I'd just give like a sort of little update, I guess, in terms of personally what's going on with me and, and stuff like that. Because obviously I've done a video or two about my weight loss and my, my postpartum recovery. So I thought I'd give a bit of an update on that. Um, and just go from there and just see if I can actually get a video out of it. So, fingers crossed. So yeah, what can I say about my weight loss journey? Well, I've gained weight, which is good. <laughs> yeah, last time I weighed myself, I gained like an extra two pounds, which obviously I was not exactly happy about. So um, it's proving to be a bit more difficult than I thought it would be. But then I guess I'm, I'm kind of in that frame of mind at the moment, even though I've got a holiday coming up and we're going somewhere hot and I'm going to have to be in like summer clothes and I know I'm going to be like really self-conscious about how I look. I try not to be, but it's just really difficult for me to, to have self-esteem when I don't really have any. <laughs> but yeah, it's just been really hard, especially like when you, when you're looking after a baby who's just constantly on the go. One, it's difficult to get out of the house to actually keep active and two, when you're out of the house, when I'm with my partner and, and stuff and not wanting to or trying to be good like eating out or getting takeaway or having that donut or that bit of cake and things like that. So, I mean, I'm trying, I'm, I'm definitely, I've cut up bread, that's that's one <laughs> one good thing I've done. Um, and I'm trying to walk, I'm doing walks every other day. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to get in at least 10,000 steps every other day. Um, as long as the weather's good, that's the problem. It's just because we're getting near winter as well, we're not really having the best weather to, to really be going out walking. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to keep that up as much as possible. I'm still trying to do the 30 day challenge, although, Again, it's proven difficult when I have like really busy days, so I really don't have time to fit it in. It's easy enough during the week because I have the routine of when my son's having his nap, I'll fit it in then. So I have the time slot in which I can do it. But on a weekend, my like the routine's all over the place, so I don't know when I'm actually gonna get the time to do it. So weekends don't tend to be very good for me. They tend to be cheap weekends at the moment. Which obviously, yeah, probably doesn't help with my my weight loss. I do think my stomach muscles are going down in terms of the diastasis recti thing. Um, because the 30 day challenge I'm doing, I it's it starts with sit up or not sit ups, um, it starts with squats, there's also press ups and leg lifts. But I've changed the, the push ups and the leg lifts in terms of the push ups I'm now doing um, from knee push-ups because I started off doing like regular push-ups and I think that weren't helping my stomach at all. I think it was, I was using too much of my core in the wrong way, which I shouldn't be doing when I still have um, diastasis recti. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm instead of having like straight legs, I'm on my knees and um, doing the push-ups and I'm also trying to hold my stomach in while I'm doing the push-ups. So if any, um, any time I'm using my core, it's being used in the right way because my stomach's being sucked in, which is what you're supposed to you're supposed to do um, to help the muscles get back to the way they are or the way they were. Leg lifts as well. It's meant to be that like you do like 25, then 30, then 40, and and going up and up until you you hit like quite a, quite a few like probably over 100 at, at day 30. But because of the way my stomach is. Um, the leg lifts I do, I, I like because I've, I've basically not really got a strong core at the moment, so I'm trying to just do like five and, and be happy with that. But five in the fact that I like my legs are up and then I lower them down on a count to five again, holding my stomach in when I do it, and that's what I'm trying to I'm trying to keep that up in order to get my stomach muscles back to the way they were. And I do think that's working, albeit 
really, really slowly, but it's it seems to be having some sort of effect. So I think that's my main thing. And also, like I said, cutting out the bread. So I'm trying to get my stomach to go down that way. Um, so the weight loss, even though it's something that I do want to, I do want to sort out because not only will I be seeing a, a change with my stomach, but I'll also be see, seeing a change on, on the scales. And when I see a change on the scales, I know I'll be seeing a change um, with the rest of my body. So, so yeah, it's just a matter of, I guess I'm, it'll probably be different like when I come back from holiday, I'll, I'll see, but I, I think it's just one of those things, like I said, I, my willpower at the moment is just non-existent because I'm constantly tired, constantly stressing out because <laughs> my son can be a little shit sometimes. <laughs> and yeah, it's just, I don't think it's, it's very easy. I, I can understand why a lot of women struggle after having a baby to get back to their original um, weight and that's even if they do ever get back to their original weight. You ha I think you have to have really strong determination to get back to it unless like you and that was another thing I always I always had this thing that I would work like go to the gym um, when I was pregnant so that I would have that sort of keeping fit thing going so then it would be easier for me to recover after I had the baby but because I wasn't working when um, I fell pregnant it meant I couldn't afford to go to the gym so it just never worked out that way so I, I kind of that's a, a Big regret for me that I wasn't able to to do the keep like the keeping fit thing while I was pregnant but uh, the hey ho can't exactly uh, do anything about that now so that's the where I am on the weight loss side I guess I could talk about obviously the fact that our holidays coming up I think we have everything ready for that I don't really think there's anything more we need to get I've got the suntan lotion that I need um, I got the one swimsuit because I don't think I'll be swimming very much. I'm hoping that um, what we'll be doing when we go out there is visiting a lot of archaeological sites because that's what I always loved about Crete. So I'm hoping that's on the on the itinerary, so to speak. I'd love to go to Knossos because I haven't been there in years, but I have a feeling my parents won't want to go there, therefore I won't, we won't be going there. But we'll see. We'll see if we can steal the car from them for a day and uh, and head there because I'd really like to get that on video. I'd like to vlog vlog that. Like I think I've said in another video, like if you do a, a YouTube um, search for for Crete, it's very selective in terms of what you actually get to see in the videos. You don't really get to see like what a variety you have on the island. More the the sort of main thing you seem to to get in terms of like travel vlogs is um, is Hania, and even though Hania is lovely. You, they, you miss out on so much more of the island and there's just so much more to see so uh, so yes yeah, so I'm hoping to vlog that we're only going for a week so but technically that that hopefully that'll be seven videos I can get in like I was saying I've, I've got the, all these ideas for videos that I want to do in the future but they're for like future videos for things that like events that are coming up so I'm currently at a stalemate in terms of what can I talk about until I get to that point <laughs> So hopefully this is a nice little uh, gap filler <laughs> before I get to that point. What else can I talk about? Oh, the fact that it's my son's first birthday in a couple of weeks. This first year has gone unbelievably quick. I mean, it is really true what they say, like the, the days are long, but the years are fast and like they go so unbelievably quick. I, I still can't believe it. He's changed our lives so much but it still is kind of like a shock to the system. You'd think that after a year you'd be used to it, but I'm still still getting to grips with it. But I think as well that's because he's constantly changing because he's just growing every day and just developing his own personality, learning new things. And yeah, it's it's difficult trying to keep up with him. <laughs> but but it's yeah, it's fun and yeah, we absolutely love him to bits. So it's an absolute joy just watching him and watch him learn and wouldn't, wouldn't want it any other way to be honest. So I've, I've, I've been stressing a little bit with the with the party because I never wanted a big party because I'm not that sort of person, I'm not like gonna go extra but I also want to make sure that I'm ticking a lot of boxes in terms of obviously um, it's a need to have entertainment for the babies but then you also need to make sure like because my, my um, husband's uh, birthday is the day after our sons 
um, so it's kind of like enjoying the celebration. So we've invited we've invited friends of ours that don't have kids as well to come to celebrate my husband's birthday. Um, so then you've got to put on not entertainment, so to speak, but you've got to make sure that everyone's happy. So and I am so shit at um, organising parties. My sister's the better one at organising parties because she had more parties than me growing. <laughs> I never, I never really wanted parties. I never really expected them. So, uh, so yeah, trying to organise them, I just really suck at it. So, yeah, we've got an entertainer for for his party for for our son's birthday. She's like, and then we've got food and we've got music. What else do you do? I really haven't got a clue. So yes, yeah, so I'm hoping it's a success. But again, that's the whole thing in terms of people are like. Oh, why are you having a birth like a first birthday party? He's not going to remember it. It's like yes, but we will remember it, which is the whole point. <laughs> also, it's his first birthday. It's a special occasion. I know he's going to have many more birthdays, but this is his very first one. And also, he's probably not going to have many birthday parties after this because because uh, I'm so shit at organising them. I won't want to do it again. <laughs> I'll just be like, no, I'll take you and your friends to the cinema or we'll go bowling or we'll go laser quest or something. You're not having a party. But then I think that's more of a girl's thing. I'm not being like sexist or anything, but I do think girls tend to want parties more than boys. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's a sort of idea I have in my head. But we'll see. If he wants parties when he's older, I might let him, but I'll just have to wait and see when we get to that point but at the moment I'm just not really a party person so once the party's over I'll be happy although then we've got to get him his first year jabs which will be fun he was good with his um with his first jabs that he had um I think he cried out one of them but he never had a temperature we gave him cowpole but he never had a temperature he was never ill with them but I think the first year ones can be quite intense so yeah not looking forward to that and yeah and then a couple of days after that hopefully he'll he won't have um he won't get ill from the jabs so then because after a few a few days after that is when we we fly on our holiday and it's a four hour flight and I'm now currently stressing as well about the fact that obviously he was really good on our on the flight when we went to Florence but that was before he could crawl and he was wanting to move about and he was happy to sit on our laps and it was an only an hour and a half, two hour flight. Crete is four hours and he's also a lot more active and a lot more um, independent and I don't think he's gonna wanna sit in our lap for four hours. Um, I was hoping that he might be walking by his first birthday. Not in like a, I don't have that development anxiety thing. If we weren't going on holiday, I wouldn't give a shit. He could be, like he could not walk until he's two. I really wouldn't give a shit. But it's the whole thing of if he walks before his first birthday, then it means that he can be, we can at least let him walk up and down the aisle with us. Like we can, we can let him walk up and down the aisle on the plane so he can, expel his energy that way and we don't have to like force him to sit in our laps for for ages because yeah i'm not looking forward to it i'm really not um i'm hoping you'll be all right because at least he might nap on us but he again he hasn't napped on me or my husband for quite a while because he gets so big now it's difficult to to for him to get comfortable and for us to get comfortable so so yeah we'll just have to is, yeah it's not something I'm uh, I'm particularly looking forward to especially because you tend to get a lot of judgy people on flights and uh, and you get people that are saying well if you can't if you're, like people shouldn't be allowed to bring babies on planes it's like fuck off people's lives shouldn't just stop completely because they've had babies and believe it or not I do think that babies benefit from going on holiday even if it is just an hour's drive away from where you live just taking them somewhere I think it really helps their development, it helps them like all seeing the world. I just think I just think it really helps them. Like I just remember coming back from Florence and just thinking he grew so much in that time, like mentally as well as physically. He just seemed like a not a completely different baby, but the, you could definitely tell I think that the, the trip had a had an effect on him. It really sort of um when I say that I mean like a positive way. It's difficult to explain but 
I, I could see there was a change and it was a good change. I think him just seeing different things rather than the same thing day in, day out, it really sort of, I, I guess, <laughs> it's gonna sound really cheesy, but it opens their mind to, to that there's, there's other things out there, like different food, different people, different language. And obviously we were only there for a couple of days, we weren't in Florence for long, so a whole week I think in Crete. I think, and, and because he's more aware as well of things going on around him and and now he's he's learning to talk and he's learned, like I said, he's learning to talk, he's learning to walk. So it's at a really sort of important time in his development and I, th and I do think that holidays and just breaks away just really, really do help um, really young children. And we kind of, we do want him to, um, to learn a second language in terms of book. Greek, I think I'd, I'd like him to learn a little bit because we do love to go to Greece on holiday or to Crete anyway, especially if my parents are moving out there, which is their their plan. Um, we will be going out there a lot more often than what we do right now. I mean, I was looking at memories on uh, social media the other day and it's been seven years since we actually went to Crete. I thought it was a bit longer, but yeah, it's been seven years since me and my husband went out there. So it, obviously it won't be another seven years before we go again. Um, I think at least once a year we'll be going. We'll be going back, and the same with with Italy. We will be going back to Italy at least once a year. But Italian is the is the language that I'd love for my son to learn the most. I mean, when I was at school, we learned French, but I can I can see us doing France as a holiday, or maybe um, he might do like trips to France with with school. But to me, French isn't a language that I I see as being beneficial to him because I mean I don't like me and my husband me and my husband learn it at school but we don't ever use it anymore sometimes we speak a little bit of German like watching watching history uh, history channels and history documentaries and stuff like that but and because I learned a bit of German when I was at school same as my uh, same as my husband but I think if anything yeah if there, if there had to be a, a language in like French or German that he, he had to learn then I'd say German rather than French but, that's just me at the end of the day and again we'll just see he's only one <laughs> putting too much on him right now but i do i think they do say that it's around this this point because they're learning to talk or this is where their language um skills really start to sort of climb up it's around here that if you want to introduce a second language that it's a really important time to do it if you can um, obviously it's quite difficult for me and my husband because neither of us are fluent in Italian. We know a few words and we find it, the longer we spend out in Italy, the easier we, we find it that we like to understand the language. But again, like I said, we're not fluent. So he has some like bilingual picture books that I bought him when he was first born. So, um, but I need to wait until he gets to a point when you can actually hand him a book and he doesn't try to eat it because that's currently where we are right now. <laughs> so it is that little bit awkward that yeah you try to read to him and all he wants to do is eat the book. Interesting times I think, <laughs> trying times, but I think that's that's, that's the way of uh, having babies. I'm hoping, I guess I can, I can talk a little bit about the videos I want to do, I'm hoping to do a few videos based around London because um, obviously I have a lot of family history there. I love, I've worked in London for quite a few years. Um, it's like my favourite city. I'm, I'm quite proud of my family history from there. So yeah, I just want to share the love of my, my city basically. Uh, so again, it's been, I've not been able to get an opportunity or I've not been able to get the, the time to have a day in London where I can actually do the videos that I, or the video that I want to do so, um, so I'm hoping that before we go away I'm actually able to get a day in London when I can do a bit like a, a day in London and vlog it because um, one I think it's like I said I just like to share my enthusiasm for for London as well as obviously giving a few tips and, uh, and advice to anyone who hasn't visited London but is planning to in the near future so I'll just see if that that happens hopefully it will because i've got no idea what i'm gonna do i need to i need to get video i need to make videos that are gonna um i'll be able to publish while i'm on holiday so i don't have any gaps 
and I'm really struggling. I'm really hoping I can, but like I said, I'm kind of winging it right now. Like this video is just completely off the cuff and and it probably won't make any sense and it's probably really boring, but I need filler. <laughs> I need filler. So um, if anyone has any ideas on what you want me to do with videos, um, I, just, I have all these ideas running around in my head, but again, it's a, a lot of it's gonna be like planning having the ideas and then getting them down, recorded and out there. So yeah, we'll just see how that goes. Oh, there was one last thing I wanted to say. I've got back into gaming, yay. <laughs> that was one video I was gonna do about how much I miss gaming and I found it physically impossible to actually get back into gaming now that I had a had a baby. And I mean, it, was, it wasn't so bad when he was first born, but now he's a toddler and he's running around and I'll constantly have to watch him to make sure he doesn't do something that will like kill him or maim him. It's yeah, it's proven to be quite difficult to get back into gaming and I was going to do a video like asking for help <laughs> on like tips how to uh, how to get back into gaming when you've got a toddler running around. But I've been managing to, to get in some gaming, obviously when my husband's here so he can watch my son, I'm not just like letting him run riot while I'm... Uh, while I'm gaming, but um, but I'm currently working my way through God of War. I started it when it first came out, and I played like 10 minutes of it, and then I just never got back into it, and I don't know why, because I've, I've pl probably played about an hour, hour and a half of it, and I absolutely love it at the moment, and um, I haven't played it for a couple of days, but yeah, again, it's just getting into that well, because I think it's it's more weekends are going to be my chance uh, of playing it, so I'm probably not going to play it for another couple of weeks now because obviously I've got loads planned. I've got birthday parties and holidays. Oh, so busy. So, <laughs> but yay, I'm back into gaming, so I can still say I am a gaming mum, which is good because obviously then I don't have to change the name of my channel. Yay! <laughs> But uh, my timer on my camera is flashing at me, so I'm going to end the video here. Um, I'm sure a lot of it will be edited, so it's not going to be as long as it's currently it's currently running. But um, but I hope you enjoy the video of me just randomly rambling. Um, and like I said, if you have any ideas on what you would like to hear me talk about, or any advice you'd want me to like hints, like any of those sort of videos, you'd you'd be interested to see my side of the or my ideas or thoughts on them, then please leave a comment below because I'd love to hear <laughs> and have some ideas because I'm really running out of them. If you enjoyed the video, um, please remember to give a like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you really like our videos, then um, please uh, sign up to Patreon and you can donate some money. Anything helps um, and it really helps me to uh, to keep my, <laughs> my spirit up in terms of keeping these videos going and get the ideas flowing for uh, for new videos um but anyway i shall see you all in the next video